I prefer fishing on salt water to fresh water for salmon. We don't go as often as we'd like because we live 30 miles from the nearest ocean access boat launch at Garibaldi and we're picky about weather. We're not comfortable fishing if the wind is more than 10 miles an hour. But lately the weather has been beautiful and the Chinook are beginning their fall run. It was definitely time to go fishing. I was surprised that the marina was not particularly crowded, though the parking lot surely was. I figured as beautiful as the day was, most of the boats would be out on the ocean. But I was wrong. The Tillamook Bar had been restricted earlier in the morning on the ebb tide, what's called ebb chop, as the outgoing tide meets the incoming swells. But the tide had changed just before we launched at 11.30 and we had an incoming tide and smoother water and the bar was not restricted. The motor usually starts on the second pull. And it did this time too. Ah oh yes, the dagger board. Remembering to put it down is easier than remembering to pull it up. Are you ready? Are you in? Yeah. I'll wait for the other boat to clear the dock. Control with a dagger board down makes backing out of a dock as easy as backing your car out of a garage. This is our usual route to the ocean out of the marina, down the shipping channel, and out through the area between two levees known as the Jaws. Today, the Jaws were full of boats. No one was on the ocean. I didn't have cameras on because I was too busy dodging fishing lines and boats as we made our way through the crowd to the open sea. Crossing the bar was easy. There were a few breakers, but it was not dangerous. It occurred to me later that all of those boats fishing the Jaws had gone out when their bar was restricted. Perhaps they didn't know that we had the green light. I check every morning. Coast Guard report for Tillamook Bay. It gives the conditions at the bar and weather and also ocean swells. We don't like the wind stronger than about 10 miles an hour not because of hazard, but just because it's uncomfortable. 
If the ocean swells are bigger than about four feet, we stay inside. Here we are on the ocean already. I wish I'd had a camera going during the crossing of the bar. We begin fishing about a mile and a half offshore in 90 feet of water. I turned the cameras off and then at two o'clock, action. You want it? Okay, get the net. This is Nareda's rod. It's left-handed. I asked her if she wanted it. But I'd forgotten, and her physical therapist said, don't do anything strenuous with your right hand. Yeah, maybe he's off. I think he's off. Nope, he's still on. Hold on to the boat. Oh, I'm supposed to leave the rubber band on, but that's okay. I keep the loose folds of the landing net rubber banded to the handle so it doesn't drape in the water and scare the fish. Don't be in too big a hurry. Don't be in too big a hurry, sweetie. He's not done yet. You should be doing this and I should be netting. Your fish. Wait. So he saw the net. That's why he's diving for the bottom. Reeling, a left handed reel, is awkward for me. From the time the fish took the bait until it was landed, there are no gaps in this recording. It's real time. From the head, from the head, sweetie, not the tail. Head from the head. Yep. Okay, that's okay. You got him. A wild Chinook salmon. <laughs> Black on both sides of the teeth. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Go 
12 and a half. We did get that all on video. The video is still running. Yep, we got it all. Blood in the boat. It's a good day. That was our first salmon of the year. And we did not get any last year. Seventy-five feet. Okay, now do I have a pen? Probably not. I used to keep pens in the tackle boxes, but they always are no good when I want them. I forgot to grab my pen. Whoa, thank goodness we saved our lives. Narrata found a pen in her bag. And fish. We're supposed to record the catch immediately. Okay. My Whoops, almost lost it. There. Number one is Chinook. It's wild. Tillamook Harbor is three. Yes. Here we go again, an hour later at three o'clock. This one will take a while. Started at five minutes till three. This one is definitely larger than the first one. This is Narrator's rod again. Our rods are identical. The only difference in our rig this day, she is using a flasher ahead of the bait, and I am not. Next time, I will. We caught both of these fish in 90 feet of water and a check of the GPS showed they were in almost exactly the same spot. Although we put 15 miles on the boat. We'll put this one on my card. 
Actually, that whole situation was awkward. Both of those fish, even though it's Nareda's rod, I landed, so they should have gone on my card. If she had a handicap sticker, then I could land a fish for her. But her disability is very temporary. And it's not as though, as seldom as we catch fish, they were depleting the stock. Seen him yet. As soon as he sees us, he's probably going to dive to the bottom again. And this might take a while. Look at that. Too bad the chest mount for the camera shows so much of my hand and the rod. Next time I'll use shoulder mount. This too is real time. farther forward and then I can get him closer to you. Maybe. There's a steel four foot leader between the weights and the flasher. After this trip I shortened it to two feet so we can get the fish closer to the boat more easily.
Don't turn it over. You got it. Okay, don't try to lift. Just hold him up. Just hold. Hold it right there. <laughs> My goodness. Ah, oh, damn. Should have brought the pistol. I have measurement numbers on the gunnel, but I was not going to hold this slippery fish that close to the edge of the boat. 44. Twenty-three. At twenty-three pounds, that's my largest salmon ever. This is why I didn't want to hold the fish up to the measuring marks on the gunnel. I need the pen. I have a whole bunch of ballpoint pens. I'm going to put a, two in every tackle box. Barbless hooks are required for salmon fishing in Oregon. We fish barbless hooks for everything regardless. Check of the GPS showed we've been in a very small area the entire afternoon. But it was time to go. We wanted to go across the bar on the flood tide. Once the ebb began, it might get rough again. High slack tide is the best time to fish in the jaws. That was the only boat we saw. We motored close to see if he needed help, but he was just fishing. Our crossing was completely uneventful. Which is a good thing, of course.
once we'd pass the chop and the slop, we slow down and let our lines back down in 40 feet of water and fished the length of the jaws. Coffee time. Okay, we're finished for the day. We were fishing with 11 or 12 ounces of weight on each line. It's probably more weight than necessary, but at idle, the dory moves just a little bit faster than is ideal for mooching. The fun part of a lovely day was coming to an end, and the hard part, the work, would soon begin. I was really surprised. We were almost the only boat coming out this late in the day. Usually there's quite a crowd. The parking lot was almost empty. Even the fish checkers had gone home. It was not yet five o'clock. Well, that was fun. Now the work begins. I usually use a pressure washer to take scales off salmon, but it was late in the day and I didn't want it go to the trouble to get it out. You just try this. And this works fine. It worked on the smaller fish, but not the large one. I had to scrape it. There was one salmon ready to be gutted and filleted. Yes, I said filleted, not filleted. I guess I'm showing my age. I know I'm not the best in the world at filleting fish. I'm sure I will get plenty of people telling me what I'm doing wrong. That's okay. Always willing to learn. My fillet knife was given to me by Washington knife maker Robert Ball many years ago. It spends most of its life on my desk as a letter opener. I think it's happier cutting fish. Now for this guy. I think we're going to need a bigger table. I cut this fish in half, trying to follow the angle of the ribs. It was just too big for that little table. Looks like I got something splattered on the camera lens. Here's what that rusty clamp is for. Clamp the skin, and it makes it much easier to remove the meat from it. All done. The bag of guts is too big to come up through the table. It's five days from trash pickup, so I will freeze the guts. Put them in the trash on Sunday. Now it's Nareda's turn to deal with the fish.
we're both tired. We'll put this in the refrigerator and vacuum seal it tomorrow. I'll divide the scraps into plastic bags and freeze them for crab bait. It's too bad the uh, cameras weren't on when I was pulling the boat out because I got distracted and uh, <laughs> hooked the uh, strap to the boat, did not winch it in, began to drive off and uh, dropped the boat on the skeg and the propeller. Uh, I stopped immediately, got out and just cranked it right in. People said, hey, your motor's dragging. I said, good, saves the transducer, which I thought had almost certainly been smashed off, but no. And I can hammer and file that out, be good as new.